Hello everyone and welcome to today's live broadcast, Genotyping to Enable Large-Scale Precision Medicine Research Studies, presented by Dr. Mark Buzik, the co-founder and chief scientific officer of Akisogen Incorporated. I'm Susie Valdez and I'll be your moderator for this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Thermo Fisher Scientific. To learn more about our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, please visit their website at thermofisher.com. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time during the presentation. Just click on that green Q&A button located in the lower left of the presentation window, type your question into the box that appears on the screen, and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Also, notice that you'll be viewing this presentation in a slide window. To enlarge that window, just click on the screen icon located at the lower right of your screen. If you have trouble seeing or hearing this presentation, click on the support button at the top right or use that Q&A button and let us know you're having a problem. This educational webinar and it thus offers free continuing education credits. After the webinar is over, click on the CE button located at the bottom left-hand corner of your webpage and follow the process for obtaining your credits. Our speaker today is Dr. Mark Buzik. Dr. Mark Buzik is a co-founder and chief scientific officer at Akisogen, a genomics, pharmacogenomics, and biobanking company based at the Greater Atlanta region in Georgia, USA. Prior to Akisogen, Dr. Buzik spent five years as a faculty member in the Department of Human Genetics at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. During his tenure at Emory, he served as a director of Emory Biomarker Service Center, director of basic research shared core resources at the Emory Winship Cancer Institute, as well as the director of the Center for Medical Genomics, which he established. Welcome, Dr. Buzik. Please begin. Thanks very much, Susie, and uh, thanks everyone for having me. We appreciate the sponsorship of uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific, Applied Bioassistance, as well as uh, LabRoots, of course, and welcome the opportunity to discuss the approaches of genotyping to enable large-scale precision medicine research studies. So this presentation will put into context the background of a new breed of service provider, which is a Kisigen, and set into context genotyping in the space of precision medicine. And what I will do is I will go over a number of examples of our experiences of a service provider in this space. And that will be namely including our work with the VA Million Veteran Program, describing the flagship applied by systems precision medicine research array and the recently released pharmacoscan array. I will touch on the new microbiome array as well as give examples on custom arrays such as our own DTC or direct consumer axiom array as well as the novel Alzheimer's disease dementia array um, now offered by our partner Cytox. And then finally, I will summarize all of this and hopefully convince you that arrays still have an important place or a very important place in genomics and its applications. Actually, I'm always asked, what does achesogen mean? So I always put up this slide. Achiso is the Greek goddess of healing and curing and essentially, that's the essence of our company. In this next slide, this, this next slide really describes, as a service company, what a Kesogen does. We essentially have three verticals. The first vertical covers our multi-omics approach to precision medicine. We offer biobanking, nucleic acid extractions, from pretty much any starting material. We offer genotyping, copy number variant analysis, transcriptomics, methylation, next generation sequencing. We offer forensic work, 
and pathology, as well as direct consumer genetics. We also develop new assays pertaining to our customers' requests. So we offer the whole gamut of multiomic services. And in addition, we offer clinical, clear, and CAP testing. We currently have an oncology microarray test that covers most solid and liquid tumors, as well as a recently developed proteomics Alzheimer's cerebral spinal fluid test. Moreover, we are now intimately involved in clinical trials to utilize precision medicine to stratify populations and optimize clinical trial design. We use all of the above technologies and capabilities in our R&D services for our clinical trials. For example, performing reproducibility studies and can work all the way from preclinical all the way to phase four, as well as developing new assays for our pharma clients. In order to do this, as I've touched on, we are clear and CAP accredited and our quality management system works to GCP. I thought I'd show this graph I developed uh, several months ago. Based on the number of citations in PubMed, it shows over the last 10 years or so, the rapid number of publications citing NGS or next generation sequencing, which continues to increase rapidly and here it's from around 7,000 publications or citations to around 24,000. Interestingly, although genotyping has not increased as dramatically, it certainly continues to increase and absolutely shows no signs of going away. Also, the cost of microarrays has become highly, highly affordable. Um, in my day back in 2005, they were about 30 times more expensive than they are today. So this now allows investigators to consider new experiments that were not feasible a decade or so ago. The Axiom microarrays have many diverse applications. These range from interrogating the microbiome and I'll briefly touch on that later. There are now important applications as well in biobanking. And these arrays are beginning to be used in forensic applications. For example, we use them for cold case investigations and or for discover disaster identifications. Arrays are used by many as a QC tool for sequence validation for instance, and there are wide ranging applications in agriculture, which alone could be the subject of another talk. Many of you know that arrays are also used in the direct consumer space, for example, for ancestry testing. And finally, of course, there are a wide ranging applications for them in medicine, of which I will focus on some applications today. Because of the low cost of arrays um, are now being utilized to annotate biobank samples, and in many biobanks, this is becoming part of the typical SOP, doing it prospectively as well as retrospectively. This really creates an outstandingly valuable resource for industry, including large pharma. And there are examples of large-scale, well-known biobanks across the US, Europe, and, and the world, some of which are shown on this slide. And as you can see here, the ones marked in red indicate biobanks that are collecting genomic data as part of a value add for prospective and retrospective studies. Well-known examples include the Kaiser Biobank, the Million Veteran Program, and UK biobanks, as well as biobanks in Brazil, Japan, and China. So moving on to the Million Veterans Program, being run by the US Department of Veterans Affairs, or VA. 
When this project began several years ago, it was one of the largest or the largest genomics project of its kind with the initial remit to genotype a million US veterans over five years. It is really all about understanding how genes affect health and using the VA healthcare system as a model. It is a voluntary system for taking part and a key advantage here is that the phenotypes or clinical information are linked to a single provider healthcare system. It could be that some of the outcomes of the study may give unique findings into certain diseases which may be more prevalent in veterans. For background information on learning about the study, I would recommend reviewing this paper in the Journal of Clinical Epidemiology. The VA continues to enroll participants for more than 60 sites across the US. It has now enrolled more than 600,000 veterans and is on track to reach its goal of a million veterans by 2020. Basically, a tube of blood is collected in an EDTA tube and plasma and DNA are stored in the VA Maverick biorepository in Boston. DNA is then shipped out to us for processing and genotyping on the Axiom Gene Titan platform. So what is the Axiom genotyping platform? Essentially, it's an end-to-end -end suite of solutions where initially one can select from a database of around about 26 million or so or so SNP variants, both common and rare, across 13 different populations. Then custom or off-the-shelf arrays can be designed in typically, say, 1,500 SNPs, all the way up to a million SNPs per array or PEG, usually in 96 or 384 well formats. Then there are a number of steps which can be done manually or ideally automated and include various hybridization, ligation, and wash steps before scanning on the Gene Titan scanner, and then analysis of the data using the Axiom Analysis Suite. And if you want a more detailed understanding of the workflow, I would recommend you go to the URL on the Thermo Fisher Scientific website indicated on this slide. So this next slide shows the SNP content of the Million Veteran Program Array. As you can see, the major components include C-SNPs, indel variants for exome content, novel exome and loss of function variants as well as markers for EQTLs. In addition, the VA has selected markers internally to support this project, uh, such as markers for PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder susceptibility. To give you an idea of the size of the VA Million Veterans Genotyping Project, here is a picture of one of our employees taking delivery of a stock of samples just for this project alone. It literally takes up the, the hallway of our large facility. And this picture shows rows and rows of uh, Thermo Fisher Affymetrics kits stacked up upon each other as part of that quarterly delivery. Literally, to put in context, a couple of these boxes could constitute someone's complete PhD project. And here is a picture of a couple of our scientists working in situ on the VA project um, in our laboratories. Uh, particularly on the left, showing Sean loading the Beckman FXP as one of the automated steps in the process, as well as a picture of one of our several gene titans. We genotyped more than 300,000 veterans to date over the last few years. Our capacity is up to 3,000 samples per day. Although we have genotyped as high as 1,000 veterans per day. So, what has been our process? Well, we receive DNA 
from the VA in 2D bar barcoded matrix tubes. The DNA concentrations are verified by a pico green assay. The VA provides blinded duplicates as part of their internal QC process for verification of concordance. And for such a large project, we have been delighted with the call rates of greater than 99% when the affymetric thresholds are 97%. And the failure um, rate to date has been less than 1%. We then return the data to the VA on the hard drives per VA guidance and specifications. So moving forward, what are the VA plans for this project? As I may have mentioned, the plan is to definitively continue collecting samples to a million by 2020. But the VA does not want to stop there. And they want to keep on going well beyond the million. Also, the VA intends to expand compute power to simultaneously support more than a thousand users. In addition, the intention is to create a secure biorepository at another location as a backup to the current site in Boston. And finally, the most important or the biggest challenge will be to work out ways and means to share data and results with the providers and their electronic health records as well as the VA patients themselves. There have already been several active funded projects to date that are already generating publication ready data. And these include projects such as PTSD susceptibility in veterans, studies in cardiovascular disease, cardiometabolic disease, kidney disease and macular degeneration, as well as projects looking into Gulf War in illness and substance abuse. And all of these projects typically require participation of VA investigators. And at the ASHG meeting um, happening uh, this year in 2017, in October, um, the VA will be presenting a lot of this data. And recently, the VA has expanded its base of subjects in this landmark study. In February last year, President Obama announced extending this project to active duty personnel. There are approximately 2 million active duty personnel in the US, in addition to the 8 to 9 million US veterans. In addition, the VA project will be closely aligned with the new and well-known All of Us project which plans to collect a million samples as a cross-section of the U.S. population. It is intended that some of this cohorts will be sourced from the VA project, and so the All of Us or Precision Medicine Initiative cohort will essentially be a sister or cousin project of the Million Veteran Program. So now moving on to discuss Thermo Fisher's um, flagship human array. This is the Axiom Precision Medicine Research Array, and it has tremendous versatility and is primarily used to genotype, uh, to, sorry, to perform genome-wide association studies across global populations. So what is the key content of this array that makes it uniquely attractive to support a multitude of research studies? It contains, for example, 800,000 SNPs that cover Europeans, East Asians, Native Americans, Africans, and South Asians with minor allele frequencies between 1 to 5 percent. There are nearly 50,000 functional variants, including EQTLs and functional non-coding variants. There are also around 2,000 or so blood phenotype uh, variants as well. The array also contains SNPs for sample tracking, quality control, as well as significant content for pharmacogenetics and HLA markers. And finally, there is a broad and a unique focus on clinical research variants, which are shown 
in more detail on the next slide. These clinical variants include markers covering more than 3,000 genes from the ClinVar database, as well as nearly 9,000 pathogenic markers, which are cited by the American College of Genetics and Genomics. Here are shown unique contents for genes such as APOE for Alzheimer's, BRCA1 and BRCA2 for breast cancer, CFTR for cystic fibrosis, and DMD for muscular dystrophy. The array also covers literally hundreds of human diseases and conditions. There are markers for most cancer types or subtypes, inflammatory and autoimmune markers such as Crohn's disease and celiac disease, markers for mental, behavioral and neurodevelopmental disorders including schizophrenia and autism, cardiovascular markers and markers for various health factors such as alcohol and even smoking dependence. So the Precision Medicine Research Array has outstanding imputation accuracy. As you can see on the left, for one of the most challenging ethnic groups, i.e. Africans, it's as high as 0.9 and 0.93 with greater than 1% and 5% minor allele frequency, respectively. And there are as many as 14.5 million markers that can actually be imputed, imputed with an R-squared of greater than 0.8 for SNPs with a minor allele frequency of greater than 1% for Africans. The Precision Medicine Research Array has a highly accurate genotyping record. In this case, uh, 270 HapMap samples were run on three separate plates and call rates, concordance, reproducibility rates are well all above 99.5%. And in the real world situation, when we get genotyping clients or collaborators um, um, own DNA, and we routinely report outstanding data quality. For example, in this narcolepsy study with Stanford University, we genotyped 288 samples and call rates were greater than 99% and failure rates again were less than 1%, which is pretty much the same quality we've been getting with the Million Veteran Program. I thought I'd uh, briefly say something and give some brief comments about the Axiom Analysis Software Suite. Basically, the software is highly intuitive and user-friendly and downloadable from the Firma Fisher uh, scientific website. It certainly handles large data sets and has a very, very straightforward and simplified workflow. And here, the analysis configuration window has already preset default as well as customizable settings and you can set all your parameters or thresholds once. The summary window and plate view is very intuitive as well as laid out. Here you can see batch, sample, plate, and SNP information locally segregated. And the SNP cluster plots and summary tables are very, very easy to understand and manage. So moving on to a quick overview of pharmacogenetics. Basically, pharmacogenetic assays allow a physician to provide a patient with precision treatment by selecting the drug that is more efficacious or more likely to work at the same time minimizing side effects. There are now more than 300 genetic markers, would you believe, that are actionable with dosing guidelines for FDA-approved drugs. And in fact, of the 1,200 FDA-approved medicines to date, 7% of them are affected by pharmacogenetic markers, 
and 18% of all the 4 billion prescriptions in the US today are also affected by pharmacogenetic markers, which shows the increased importance of knowing more about pharmacogenetics. And now coming back to the Precision Medicine Research Array, uh, this product has most of the pharmacogenetic markers that are interesting to the research community. And on this array, it comprises more than 1,000 markers for 300 genes for key drug target genes, such as APOE, drug transporter genes, such as OATP1, and drug metabolizing genes, such as CYP2D6 and 2C19. So there's a, a good quality pharmacogenetic content just on the Precision Medicine Research Array. However, the two main pharmacogenetic products that are well known, i.e. the DMET cartridge and the new Axiom Pharmacoscan Array, are specific products that have been developed in the pharmacogenetics world by Firma Fisher Affymetrics. And this table compares the two technologies. Essentially, the DMET solution is really a clinical solution used in a low volume, one sample at a time, with nearly 2,000 markers in 231 genes. And the software allows translation of, star, of the star allele format for the important genes. And the Pharmacoscan array is much more high throughput, typically doing batches of 24 samples or specimens at a time, and really has the most comprehensive coverage. That's an astonishing 4,600 plus markers comprising 1,191 genes. And what is unique about the Pharmacoscan array? Uniquely, the real estate on this array captures copy number variation, or CNV analysis, for copy number states, ranging from zero all the way to three copies and beyond, for important ADME genes, as well as indels, and its genotypes, highly predictive markers in genes, such as CYP2D6 again, CYP2C19, CYP and CYP2C9, which are in highly homologous regions. So the content for the Pharmacoscan was actually selected by key opinion leaders and consortia around the world, including the Clinical Pharmacogenetics Implementation Consortium and the Pharmacogenomics Knowledge Base. From a research point of view, it truly is the most comprehensive pharmacogenetics array on the market today, including CPIC genes, copy number genes, and haplotype calling genes. Again, as I've shown for previous arrays, the concordance and call rates are all above 99%, as exemplified by this study from four different independent sites. And in this slide, we can see tighter cluster plots for important and difficult to genotype pharmacogenetic markers using the 1,000 Genomes Project um, calls as a comparator compared to the Pharmacoscan Axiom calls. These examples shown here include the star 3 al 3 allele for CYP3A5, the star 3 allele for CYP2C19, as well as the star 4 allele for CYP2C19. And in addition, one of the, the most difficult to genotype genes, CYP2D6, as you can see, is genotyped accurately for these three difficult to assay markers, including the very well known star 4 allele. And these are, this next slide shows examples of copy number variants um, calling from 0 to 3 for six key pharmacogenetic markers, red for one copy number, green for two copy numbers, and blue for three copy numbers. You can see the variants are tightly grouped for the discrete copy numbers. 
Okay, so moving on, I wanted to briefly introduce a new array that was recently launched for the new and exciting field of microbiome analysis. Genomic technologies has really opened up this, this new area, mainly in sequencing. However, this new product does have some really exciting attributes. I really wanted to highlight that the Axio Microbiome Array allows profiling of all five organisms present in the sample. And these five organisms are bacteria, viruses, fungi, archaea, as well as protozoa, which I think is a unique strength for this assay or this product vis-a-vis -vis, um, other assays. There is high resolution of the species, strain, and sequence. The array interrogates more than 12,000 microbiotica, and of course the applications are enormous, primarily in animal research, the ag market, and nutrigenomics. And this next slide simply gives a breakdown of the number of families, number of species, a number of target sequences, which are 135,000, basically comprising the five different species. The array performance has been evaluated on both known complex mixtures and real biological samples, for example, still. The true positive rates and positive predictive value were evaluated on 222 samples of known composition with complexity ranging from 1 to 22 strains per sample. Now, strain level resolution is really dependent upon sequence information in the reference database. As an example, highly related strains may actually share probes with the detected strain due to similarity of genomic sequence. This probe sharing can lead to a database target with less complete annotation being the best explanation of the summarized probe intensity data. Moving on again, we at Akisogen launched at the start of this year our own direct-to-consumer Axiom Array. The 900,000 SNP content consists really of three components. It has a large number of SNPs from the Precision Medicine Research Array. There are client-specific SNPs, and we have our own proprietary content. Our whole model is really a B2B model. That is, we run our array for multiple clients, which range from a dozen small to large businesses. We provide these consumer companies with their markers of interest, and these businesses then report the data to their individual clients. Running the same array for multiple businesses actually allows us to provide highly competitive pricing, and we offer that whole end-to-end -end solution, starting with saliva or, swap, uh, or swabs to SNP data output. And our applications have been pretty expensive, primarily most offerings in the health and wellness space, tackling athletic prowess, for example, fitness, and applications in areas such as weight management. So this is a product we've, we've developed and, we can, and we're looking to launch a version two um, next year. The final part of the presentation will introduce you to a new array for, deme for dementias developed by Cytox, a company in the UK. In a nutshell, this array has more than 130,000 SNPs and, has, and is used to identify individuals at risk of cognitive decline and has been initially used for late onset Alzheimer's disease.
So Cytox have developed a polygenic risk score using the Variatect and SNPFIT technology for, as for, as for assessing Alzheimer's disease risk. Now, the polygenic risk score is based on a number of algorithms utilizing both a, a, a hypothesis-driven based model and a non-hypothesis uh, approach, as well as an algorithm based on the mTOR pathway that have been developed over the last few years. Some of the obvious challenges for Alzheimer's early detection before tangible symptoms appear are that of invasiveness via lumbar puncture or expensive brain amyloid imaging via PET scanning. So there is an urgent need for a simple, non-invasive blood-based biomarker test or in actual fact that could potentially be a non-invasive saliva-based uh, test. The 130,000 SNPs have been sourced from a number of areas. They come from a whole host of genome-wide association studies, as well as um, navigating the academic literature over the past several years. Markers also have been sourced from Alzheimer's disease genes involved in the amyloid pathway and other areas including genes involved in inflammation, endocytosis, cholesterol metabolism, as well as the mTOR pathway itself. In addition, markers were selected from whole exome sequence data from well-known cohorts such as the ABLE data. Now, as mentioned uh, previously, the two main models used so far for algorithm training are the hypothesis, model one, and the non-hypothesis, which is model two. The risk score models have been trained and tested on cerebral spinal fluid confirmed specimens or PET amyloid positive samples. The subjects for the training have come from right across the whole disease spectrum, that is cognit uh, cognitively normal, mild cognitive impairment, or MCI, to probable Alzheimer's disease. All cases are amyloid positive via lumbar puncture or PET imaging. Now, prim primarily validation has been performed by blinding clinically assessed post-mortem pathology confirmed cases and controls. The training set of 703 samples came from three Caucasian cohorts. That's a cohort from Cytox, the ABLE cohort, and the University of Sorbonne that were age and sex matched with 35% amyloid positive, 31% APOE4 carriers, 9% MCI, and 15% Alzheimer's disease. The blinded test of 300 samples came from the same three Caucasian cohorts with 34%, in this case, amyloid port positive, 35% APOE4 carriers, 12% MCI, and 17% Alzheimer's, a similar breakdown to the initial training set. The key finding was that the hypothesis-free variant model 2 had a positive predictive value of Alzheimer's detection of, wait for this, of 89% with an AUC or area under the curve of 94%. And when these algorithms were run on an independent test set of 237 brain bank samples from UPenn, in this case, the positive predictive value for the hypothesis-driven model was 95.8%, and the hypothesis-free model still performs incredibly well at over 91% PPV. Note in this cohort, the number of amyloid cases was 88%, and Alzheimer's disease was 53%. Therefore, 
this new technology now provides a great, great opportunity to affordably stratify patients for clinical trial recruitment and reducing the screening failure rate, of course, optimizing clinical trials and potential companion diagnostic approaches. Other benefits would, of course, include reducing PET and CSF procedures. So to conclude this section, two basic models or algorithms have been developed with more than a thousand samples. The blinded validation study has been successful for both models, showing a true positive rate of greater than 95%. And also a true negative rate of 76% of is possible, which was not presented here. And the models are much better than what is out there today with APOE for Alzheimer's risk detection. Much, much better. And as I've mentioned, in the, this tool has significant possibilities for clinical trial optimization and companion diagnostics development. And so to summarize the, the talk today, I hope I have convinced you that microarrays are still a very, very important in large-scale genotyping. Today's pricing allows scientists to really consider experiments never before feasible. And the suite of new axiom arrays provide high, high utility um, in many different disease and therapeutic areas. And finally, quality and turnaround time will absolutely keep microarrays front and center as a crucial tool for precision medicine. I'd like to acknowledge the US Department of Veterans Affairs, the team at Stanford University and CITOX, as well as our, our team at Akistion and finally, I'd like to thank the folk at Therma Fisher for sponsoring today's presentation. If anyone would like to contact me or any of our team at Akistion to learn more, please do not hesitate to contact me by phone or email. Contact details are shown on this slide here. Thank you for your time today, and with that, I'd like to hand it back to our, mon our moderator, Susie Valdez. Susie, over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Buzik, and thank you for your informative presentation and your important research. Audience members, we will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on that green Q&A button at the lower left of your presentation window Type your questions into the box that appear on the screen and click the Send button. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's take a look at our questions that are already coming in. <clears throat> Dr. Buzik, our first question from our audience is, do you think with cost of sequencing rapidly decreasing that genotyping will be superseded completely by sequencing? By yeah, thank you for that question. That's a question that a lot of people want to know and understand, and um, it's an important one to answer, especially how in today's age when people are planning um, NGS versus uh, arrays. I don't believe genotyping or microarray genotyping is going away anytime soon. As, as an analogy, as we saw with Sanger sequencing versus NGS, for example, Sanger is still used today as an important tool for clinically validating NGS in many diagnostic and clinical labs. It is still considered the gold standard in many clinical laboratories. And so in the same way, microarrays are used and will continue to be used as an orthogonal quality control for NGS, especially whole genome sequencing, and many, many people 
who do hold genome sequencing today, absolutely as part of their QC, will always run the microarray. So hopefully that gives you um, a general answer to that question. Great. Thank you so much. And here's a wonderful question from an audience member <clears throat> about your company. I hadn't heard of a ketogen before this webinar. What is the company's vision and mission in the next five years? Okay. Great question. Thanks for, for that question. Um, as, I, as I may have mentioned, the Kesogen really sees itself as a new breed of precision medicine-focused CRO or contract research organization that uh, supports not only pharma but other CROs who want to be in the precision medicine space to generate genomic as well as pathology data. So the marriage of genomics and pathology we believe is going to be very, very important in the future, especially in the world of immuno-oncology. And this data is of the highest quality at all stages of clinical trials. The kind of data generated would be used to stratify cohorts, optimize clinical trials, in this, some of the examples I gave today, as well as for companion diagnostics. We really see this area growing considerably in the coming years and intend to be front and center uh, for this new way for precision-focused medicines. So hopefully that gives you an idea of our company and where we see ourselves going in the coming years. And also, not only um, in the U.S., we really see ourselves as doing all of these things as a global service provider in Europe and Asia, as well as the U.S., where we, pre where we are already, and also providing standardized and harmonized services in all of these areas across the world. Thank you, Dr. Buzik. Our next question is, how can I get access to the data you are generating for the Million Veteran Program? Okay, great question. Um, yes, there is a process to this, and I've been asked this several times. So what you need to do is to go to FedBizGov and see if there are any re requests for proposals or RFPs that the VA has announced. The VA announces these from time to time. If there are any there at all or any suitable ones, you would simply apply as for any normal grant or contract process. I believe that typically the VA expects there to be at least one VA investigator as part of that team that is applying. Or alternatively, what I would do is, or another alternative, is you can contact the VA Million Veteran Program directly, and I'm happy to provide a link if need be to do that, to ask them what they may be planning or when are they planning to launch their next tranche of RFPs and what the topics might be. As you can see, there's a lot of data being generated at the moment, and there's a lot of interest in now getting access to that data, primarily in a research context, to improve the health and well-being, not only of veterans, but taking it beyond veterans to the larger community. Thank you, Dr. Buzik. That's so wonderful. And thank you, audience members, for your live participation. We have some wonderful questions continuing to come in. Our next question is, can you tell me more about your direct-to-consumer array and how can it competes with Helix's offering of, I think it's 23andMe? Yes. Um, so I, I get asked this question of, um, a lot as well. Well, as I may have mentioned, our array contains 900,000 SNPs, and that's version one for this year, which include a lot of the content of the Precision Medicine Research Array, plus a lot of customer content, and is certainly competitively priced. Also, in our business model, we do not keep or store any customer data. Now, with respect to Helix's whole exome sequencing approach, right now, if you compare the return on useful markers from a consumer stance, you can get just as much useful information today from an array 
as you can from whole exome sequencing. Now sure, you get a whole lot of more information from exome sequencing, but we do not know what 99.9% .9 of that means today. Maybe in a decade or more, we may learn more from exomes, but largely in this direct consumer space, um, exome sequencing is okay for building databases for the future, but in my opinion, has limited value at least today for you and I as a consumer or, uh, as a consumer of this technology. Thank you. Our next question is, I'm interested in learning more about the Cytox array for Alzheimer's. Where can I get more information and can I get it into my healthcare system? Okay, this is a very interesting product and um, I'd love to tell you more about this. Um, yes, I agree, it, it is a very promising tool for non-invasive, late onset Alzheimer's disease risk detection. I think the next step would be to also put you in touch with our partners at Cytox. I can certainly put you in touch with uh, Kevin Banks, who is the head of global business development at Cytox, or you can contact him, contact him directly by emailing kevin.banks at cytoxgroup.com. But in general terms, with respect to getting it into the healthcare system, I believe risk-based assays, such as this one, will become more common in the healthcare setting over time, but must, must be driven by physicians. In order to better convince patients to change their habits or for a healthier lifestyle, for example, if a doctor tells you you have a high risk of stroke or heart attack, whatever, because there is a history in the, fam uh, in the family is important, if this risk can be highlighted from a genetic risk score, then so much the better in providing these tools to physicians to help better manage healthcare, even though reimbursement may still be an issue. I think this is um, a work in progress and um, will become part of the system over time. Thank you so much, Dr. Guzik. And thanks again for our audience. We have time for one more question. We end it with this question. I was happy to see you introduced the, that you introduced the microbiome. Oh, by, by, I'm so sorry. I was happy to see you introduce the microbiome array as I was not aware of this product. Do you know of any publications or white papers on the array? Yes, um, great question. Um, yes, I am actually aware of one white paper with the microbiome array is compared with 60NES, next generation sequencing. And I believe one of the conclusions is that the microbiome array um, has a higher resolution than 60NES. I would actually suggest that you go or recommend um, um, that, that the people listening in to go to the Thermo Fisher scientific website and download that paper and, and learn more about it. it it's a, a very exciting tool um, that can be used very, very quickly and certainly um, um, as a scientist I'd be looking and comparing and contrasting the microbiome array with uh, the 16S and beyond NGS um, for the best for a product for um, my scientific research. Wonderful. Thank you so much again, Dr. Guznik. Did you have any closing remarks you'd like to provide for our audience before we close today? Um, yes. Um, um, in general terms, what I'd like to say, because uh, hopefully um, some of my passion in this area of personalized and precision medicine is coming across, um, I'm convinced that genetics is becoming more and more pervasive in our society from all aspects of our lives. Now this would include anything from performing ancestry tests to seeing how genetics plays a part in, in the health and well-being, such as things like weight management, to understanding your risk for breast cancer as well, or Alzheimer's, to whether a drug will work for you, 
or give you a side effect, to even studying how your flora or microbiome affect your health. And these are just a few examples. And today, all of these modalities can be well studied using large-scale genotyping technologies, um, particularly the Axiom, um, the Axiom Array Suite. At Akisogen, we are well positioned to execute on these studies, as one of our strengths is actually being one of the largest genotyping facilities in the US, and notwithstanding being a global provider as well for genomic technologies and pathology and marrying those two disciplines. Our core competency is generating data of the highest quality. And so once again, if you have any further questions on any of these topics, or if you had a question that did not get answered or did not, that there wasn't enough time to have it answered, please do feel free to email me at your earliest convenience. Thank you once again for spending your time with me today. Thank you very much. Dr. Buzik, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. And I'd like to also thank LabRoots and, of course, our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to remind everyone that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through April 2018. You'll receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please, please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all for now, and thanks so much for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you.